Did you know we need stirrups for shear design of reinforced concrete beams? The stirrups are closed loop bars that encircle the main reinforcing bars in concrete beams. The main function of stirrups is that they resist diagonal cracking, they hold concrete together, providing a casing for main reinforcement in concrete beams. In this lecture, I will solve an example on shear design of reinforced concrete beams as per Eurocode 2. Stick around till the end of the lecture to learn a step-by-step -step process for shear designing a concrete beam. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at University of East London. On this channel, we explore civil engineering and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. This is example three. Now, it is the same example that I did for singly reinforced concrete structures. And in there, we found out the bottom reinforcement. And I have taken this portion, the bottom one, from lecture where we designed singly reinforced beam because we will need this AS1. So that is why I have copied this bottom portion from there. Click on right side of the screen to watch a tutorial on design of singly reinforced concrete beam where I designed bottom tension reinforcement, which I will use here in this example to design shear reinforcement. FCK is given 25 Newton per millimeter square, FYK 500, and the dimensions are same and the loading is same as we had in example in case of singly reinforced beams. And this result, because AS1 is used in some of the formula, so that's why I have taken this results from that example. If you're asked to design for shear, then I mean, certainly AS1 will be given to you. Now, these are the formula that we are going to use. So shear resistance, we'll use this formula. And I have already described these formula. Compression capacity of a strut, Z is equal to 0.9D. V1 has got this value, 0.6 into 1 minus FCK over 250. And then diameter of links, you have these formula. I will refer back to these formula time and again. And then uh, this is very useful. This is shear area divided by spacing. For different diameters, you have been given a spacing of links. And we will be working out this AS over S for various parameters. It is similar to main reinforcement. We had number of bars, but in case of shear reinforcement, certainly we have these specific uh, spacings, the common ones that we use. Now, first thing first, to solve this problem, we are going to use these formula and we're going to use this table. So the first step is design shear force. Now design shear force is simply 0.5 WL. Now how do we determine it? Simply it has been taken from here. GK is 12 and QK is eight. This is what is given to us. GK is 12 kilonewton per meter and QK is eight newton per meter and the length of the span is seven so this w is equal to 1.35 gk plus 1.5 qk 1.35 into 12 plus 1.5 into 8 this will hopefully give me the same value plus 1.5 into 8 28.2 now this is the design load and you know that if you have this member then shear force diagram SFT is like this. We can term it as SFT or V and this is WL over 2, WL over 2. So this is what we have done over here. 0 0.5 times 28.2 times 7. The design shear load is 98.7 kilonewton and this is 98.7 kilonewton. Does it make sense? Now I will have to check if shear reinforcement is required or not. So if you go back here, this is where we have to determine these things. We have to check if shear reinforcement is required or not. And how do we check it? We have to check VRDC. That is the shear capacity of compression strut. We have to check if applied shear is less than compression capacity of the strut. If it is less than that, 
If this condition is satisfied, then we say that the shear is not required. If the condition is not satisfied, on the other hand, we say that shear is required. When it is not required, then we use this formula. When if it, it is required, we use this formula. So it means that first I have to check this VRDC. Now VRDC is again, this is the same formula as I showed you a little earlier. CRDC K 100 Rho 1 FCK and other bits. And FCK here is 25 Newton per millimeter square. CRDC, the formula is 0.18 over gamma C. Now I'm getting this formula from here. So CRDC is this one. K is this formula. So gamma C is a factor and K is simply 1 plus 200 over D, where D is the depth of the section. So depth of the section is 450. And if we put all these values, it becomes 1.67. This should be less than 2. If it is not, then use 2. Now I have value of K. I have value of CRDC. Now next thing is I have to find out this row 1. Now row 1 is related to tension reinforcement. Assuming that tension reinforcement is taken onto the supports and anchored. And the formula for row 1 is AS1 divided by BWT. That is called reinforcement ratio. So AS1 is area of tension reinforcement. Now this is to be taken as the area of provided tension reinforcement, not the one which is required. So if I go back here, now the required area was 1008. Provided area due to 4H20 was 1260. So here we will use the one that we have provided, which is 1260. And again, just if you're wondering where did I get these results from, these are from example one in singly reinforced beam where we design the beam for tension. Now again, if you put these values, B is the width of the beam, D is the effective depth of the beam, you're getting 0 0.0108. This should be less than the maximum value of 0 0.02. It means that this is fine. And sigma CP is zero because there is no axial load. Sigma CP is equal to NED over AC, where NED is axial load, which is zero. It means that sigma CP is going to be zero. And then I have to determine V min as well. I have to check the minimum as well. So let us check V min. So V min is equal to 0 0.0. So let me show you the formula. So V min is going to be used with the minimum value over here. Value of V min, when you put these values, it becomes 0.38. VCR the minimum. Okay, we will use this minimum a little later. So now I have all these values. This is sigma CP is zero because there is no axial load. CRDC I have determined earlier from here, 0.12, okay? So you can see this value here, 0.12, and value of K is 0.167, and this is where I got this value of K. 100 comes from the formula. Rho is the reinforcement ratio, which is 0 0.0102, and Rho is determined here, 0 0.0102. And then you multiply it with FCK, which is 25. And then there is a whole power, 1 over 3. Because this term K1 into sigma CP is 0, so that's why this whole expression now is going to be multiplied with BW into D. Now, once you have got this, it comes out to be 72 kilonewtons. Now, this has to be greater than minimum VRDC. We have minimum VRDC, if you go back, we should compare it with minimum as well. So minimum comes from this formula. Small V min, I already determined, 0 0.3778. Sigma CP is zero because there is no axial load. BW is width and D is the depth. So when I put these values, it comes out to be 46 kilonewton. Our value of VRDC is certainly greater than the minimum value. So it means that this VRDC is fine. Now I have to check this. If VED is less than VRDC, then minimum reinforcement should be provided. Okay, in our case, VED is 98, VRDC is 72 point something. So that is not less than 
VRDC, it means that shear must be provided. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because VED is greater than VRDC or alternatively VRDC 72 is greater than VED is 98 point something in previous slide, 98.7. So this means that shear must be provided. So when no shear is provided, then I just have to use the minimum values. All right. Shear is not required to simply use minimum area. When it is required, then I have to use these two formula for ties and for struts. Now we have to work out VRD max. That is the compression capacity of compression strut. Assuming angle to be 21.8. So angle can be any angle between 45 and 21.8. Normally we use this one for economy. Now here again I will use the formula. Formula is this one. In this one, I have to figure out V1, first of all. So V1 is 0 0.6 minus into bracket 1 minus FCK over 250. Now all formula are here. So I'm going to use these formula. So V1 is 0 0.6 into bracket 1 minus FCK over 250. Only variable here is FCK. So from here, I get value of 0.54. Now once I have this value, then I will go ahead and find FCD. FCD is again, I have already determined this alpha CC is 0.85, FCK is given, alpha CC is a factor divided by gamma C, which is 1.5. Now this is giving me the design compressive stress, which is 14.2. And I have already determined this kind of equation in when I was plotting stress diagrams for singly and doubly reinforced beams. BW is the width of the section, Z for shear is 0.9D. So when we talk about shear, Z is going to be 0.9D. So that's why we have this 0.9 times D. D is the effective depth. And V1, we determine. Again, you can have a look at for Z, we have this formula. And FCD, we just determine. Divided by cot 21.8, the value of cot 21.8 and tangent 21.8 should be these. Cot is inverse of tangent. So if I find 21.8 tangent, which comes out to be 0.399997, means 0.4. And if I inverse it, I'm getting 2.5. Now we have this VRD max. Now this is greater than VED. So this should be fine. The capacity of compression is spread is greater than VED. So this is fine. Now we have to find the diameter and spacing of links. Where VED is less than VRDC, we have to provide minimum. So VED, in our case, VED is greater than uh, greater than VRDC. So we don't have to worry about this, but you might want to find VED over here, which might be less than VRDC, then you are providing kind of minimum reinforcement into this middle region. Okay, middle L over 4 region. So this is from that perspective. The actual links, it would be on the next slide. We have to provide minimum reinforcement somewhere or we can check it as well. So for minimum, we have this formula 0 0.08 into FCK divided by FYK. FCK is 25, FYK is 500. A minimum reinforcement ratio is 8 into 10 raised minus 4. The minimum reinforcement ratio is also equal to ASW, means area of shear reinforcement divided by S into BW into sine alpha. Now, what is sine alpha? Alpha is the angle of stirrup. So if you're using vertical stirrup, angle is going to be 90. So sine 90 is going to be equal to 1. What did you call alpha? Theta is angle for compression start in this formula. In this figure, you can see here, alpha is the angle with horizontal of stirrup. So in this case, we have vertical stirrup. Because of having vertical stirrup, we have this angle as 90. ASW over S, I'm taking it on the other side. And then if you take it on the other side, then you will be left with this row into, into BW, which is your width of the section. And sine alpha means sine 90. So sine 90 alpha is equal to 90. Sine 90 is equal to 1. From here, you get values of ASW over S 
as 0.22. So these are the formula that I have used because this entire bit is in denominator. So don't be confused in that. That is why it's been multiplied on the other side. Now this is the minimum one. Now minimum one, it will be at places where you have shear force, which is minimum where you have VED less than VRDC. So for example, at this position, if VED is less than VRDC, then for the middle portion, you will use this spacing. Again, I have to determine the maximum spacing as, as well. So maximum spacing, formula for maximum spacing is 0.75D. The maximum spacing is 338. So again, if you, so I have to use a spacing which is less than 338. So this is giving me maximum spacing. So from this table, if you have a look at this table, the value for minimum is 0.22 millimeter. And the limit for spacing is 338. So I, I don't have to go beyond that. So in this table, you can see that if I choose eight millimeter dial link, and if I choose this 300 millimeter spacing, and then it is giving me 0.335. This is value of AS divided by S. Now as AS divided by S is 0.22, so that is really very minimum value. So I have got nothing which is less than 0.335. So if I had something which is less than 0.335, then I would have used it. Use H8 at 300 millimeter centers for which ASW over S is equal to 0.335. Now ASW over S is the same thing as this ASV over SV. For the case, which is our case, where VED is greater than VRDC, provide the shear reinforcement according to this formula. Here we have VRDS equal to ASW over S and Z and FYD cot 30. Now from here, we can separate this ASW over S and VRDS is equal to, for the time being, we are saying that VRDS is equal to the applied shear. So when we say it's equal to applied shear, then we can work out the value of ASW over S. So from here, Z is equal to 0.90, and FYD is equal to design strength of the steel, the gamma, FYK is 500, gamma factor is 1.15 for steel, and cot theta, it's the same. This is caught 21.8 degrees. So 21.8 degrees is giving me 2.5. So from here, I can get value of ASW over S as 0.224, which is not very far from the minimum one. Again, I think the same spacing 300 at H8 bar will do the job. So for the entire section, use the same spacing. And then finally, you could say that, okay, once you have got the spacing, then you can use this longitudinal diagram of the beam. So these are stirrups, and at the bottom, you have this tension bar at top. You have this compression bar, and you could say that this stirrup is H8 at the rate 300 millimeter center to center. Any more questions? If there are no more questions, then I, I will sum up very quickly. So the way design for shear and beam works is that VED should be less than VRD. We actually find out the capacity of compression strut. If applied shear is less than compression strut, then we just provide minimum reinforcement. If this condition is not satisfied, then shear is required. For these two conditions, we have this formula. When shear is not required, we use this formula. When shear is required, we use these two formula. And then we use this table as well to work out AS over S. And then finally, once we design it, we can give this diagram to show a spacing of the stirrups. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more practical insights into structural engineering and beyond. Until next time, stay curious.